Hey everyone, so welcome back to another Lightroom tutorial where people send in their photos and I try to recreate and edit like them. So we've got another image sent in and all her details will be down in the description as always for you guys to go give her a follow. So coming down, looking at the feed, you can see a lot of landscape shots, some pretty cool colors sometimes. And yeah, if we keep coming down, we will see the image we're going to be working with today that I really, really like, this one right here. So we're going to be trying to recreate the exact edit of this one here. So make sure you guys, make sure you go give her a follow down in the description. Really helps out. And yeah, let's get into Lightroom and see if we can create something like this. Here's the image from Instagram and we've got the raw, unedited image here. So very first thing I'm going to do, enable profile corrections. And as you can see, we're looking too warm and too green. So I'm going to cool down the image by about a thousand. And that helped a little. And then we are exposed not too badly. Might bring up, bring down these whites a lot as it's very bright up there. And then, as you can see, we need to drop these blacks as it's quite dark in some areas. And I might just put a bit of clarity in there. Clarity, as you can see, I describe it as a glassy look. So water becomes a bit finer and yeah as you can see there's a bit of a vignette on the image darker in the corners here so coming down not too strong about there and there is a slight fade to this image so I'm going to do tone curve and I'm going to do red green and blue channels it's hard to know whether the photographer did use these there's obviously different ways to get the same look but for this image I'm going to try to create some contrast using the group ring red, green and blue channel. So just do a general S curve. So I did a S curve in uh, the, those channels and if I turn this on and off just the curves you can see what just the uh, curves did for the red green and blue channel. So it added quite a bit of contrast in there so what you do is just do an S curve and then give a slight favor to maybe some of the colors you want so maybe you want more uh, yellows in the midtones so you would pull the blues out there but otherwise just do an S curve and match up the colors and you'll get a bit of contrast and since we've got a bit of contrast already we don't have to do as much of an S curve on this one for this particular image anyways so I want to add a bit of a fade okay so that's our curves done and I'm just going to knock down saturation, just very quickly try to get saturation close-ish. And then we're going to try to do our hues and match up 
some of these colors. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to do some split toning. So I reckon there's a lot of blues in the shadows. And you can see that by looking very closely in the shadows. And I'm going to put a decent amount in. And it really helps to get our watercolour. As most of the water is shadows. So looking pretty good. And I might put a bit in the highlights as well. As I think they look a little blue. things like her shirt look a tad blue and I will chuck in some sharpener right on to HSL now so Roughly get our saturation right. So the reds, you just want to flip them back and forth so they're affecting the inside of the boat more. And it just takes a bit of time because uh, the oranges and the reds and the yellows, they look to affect the same thing sometimes. Uh, leave the oranges there yellows so affecting only the bright areas of the boat and underneath here move them slightly to a lighter color uh, green so there's only a tiny bit of greens way back there I think they look a little warmed Try to get these water colors a little better. Purple, you can see we've got some purple way back there. It's not there. And quite dislike that, so I'm going to shift it towards more of a blue. Now, saturation. Reds. So, mainly looking at this little spot here, is that, that's the most red thing. Drop it a long way down. Orange, so bringing it up a bit and where it's tricky is uh, luminance will affect the saturation as well so you've got to jump back and forward on these figure it out yellows I'm going to bring up quite a bit Greens way off in the background, desaturate them. Aquas. Is that before and after so far? Now we're looking a little saturated, but I think the water on this side is looking a bit more shiny or brighter. So, gonna play with some 
Might try luminance of the yellows. Drop them. I actually think the waters look okay. I think it's a little brighter. So the reds were really affecting the inside of the boat. I think it looks a little brighter in there. Just a tad, maybe. Just a tad of orange. pretty close right so pretty done now but as you can see I've got this blue rope that has been taken out of the image here and that's it for Lightroom I think I think we're pretty darn close could play around with the saturation a little more if you wanted to create more of a glow on top of the water I don't think we need to but you'd do something with the luminance of the blues okay so before and after so we're gonna get rid of this rope here now and what you do is you come up here click help type in photo Shop, edit in Adobe Photoshop. Okay, so in Lightroom, duplicate your background. So you're working on this layer, not your very bottom layer, so we can correct a mistake if you make one. We'll zoom right in. And this is actually a pretty tricky uh, thing to remove. So we'll see what we can do. You want the clone stamp tool, bracket key to bigger and smaller press alt and you can grab an area here so it's blue water drag it over and place it on top of another thing so we are gonna use 92 opacity so because if it's at 100 you might just get these round might get round very round circles with no blending on the edges don't really want that so this is gonna take a wee while I'd imagine so all I'm doing is holding alt, coming across and clicking. And if you make a bit you don't like, just press uh, control Z and it will undo. And we're very zoomed in so you shouldn't notice you don't have to be perfect because it shouldn't be too noticeable once you zoom back out and then once it goes on Instagram be difficult to see so and because it's 92 you might have to click twice to make it completely go through but it's worth it to have that little bit of blend Right. So here's the tricky part. What I'm going to do Grab here. Yeah. 
and if this was my photo going on Instagram I'd probably take a bit more time Now what I'll do is come down the middle. It's normally not this tricky, but... You want to keep re-choosing where you sample your area. Because as you see, every time I click, there's that little... And it samples from a different area as you move. So it's traveling down the boat with me. I've sort of gone in a bit too much there. So I'll select here again. Just make sure I get it a bit straighter. Get rid of a bit of blue bits. You could zoom in and get as picky as you wanted. And it got a bit repetitive down here. The same pattern was repeating, so I'm just trying to break it up. And coming back out, you wouldn't even notice it was there. And there's someone, even if someone pointed out a rope was there, you probably wouldn't even see it. I probably, if it was my photo, I probably would have taken out the numbers there as well. But I think that looks pretty good. So yeah, that's about it guys. So make sure you go give her a follow down in the description. You can give myself a follow down there as well. And comment down below who you guys want to see. But make sure they don't have too many followers. Then I'll reach out to them. They can send in a photo. And I will do a tutorial on them. So yeah, that's about it. Comment down below. And I really appreciate it. If you leave a like. And yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one.